we're going to do NFL check down game today. So you know how this works. We'll give you a question. We'll provide two possible answers for it. And then we'll select the answer that we think fits best. So let's rock with it. Hey, this. great, great explanation. It sounds like someone wrote that down for you. I don't know that that don't sound like it even written down. That's how the game works. So let's let's jump right into it because this shit is all about quarterbacks because they're the only thing that matters. So <laughs> trade rumors heat up. Falcons, they're gonna get one. Better fit for the Falcons, Justin Fields or Kirk Cousins? I'm gonna go Justin Fields. He's younger, he's more mobile. And when you are a struggling franchise, sometimes you just need someone that can make plays on their own. And Justin Fields can do that. And then the other thing is you have a pretty young core there, right? Pitts, Drake London, Bijan, especially on offense. At least two more years that they'll be together. Right. So you can build chemistry over multiple years with a young quarterback like Fields, whereas Cousins, who knows, maybe you only get two more good years from Cousins. And then where does that leave you? Or maybe he's never the same. Or maybe not, right? You never know what happens after injuries at, a, at an older age. So I'm just going to go Justin Fields. No disrespect to Kirk Cousins, but I, I would go Justin Fields. I, I think if they're both healthy, I think I'll go Kirk Cousins. But, I mean, that's not the case. And also with Kirk, I think we've seen what his ceiling is. Like, he's been in offenses with talented players, decent old lines and weapons and stuff. Like, we see what the ceiling is. Justin Fields, I haven't seen him with any of this. I haven't seen him with a good old line. I haven't seen him with a great supporting cast. I haven't seen him with a great offensive coach. I mean, Kirk Cousins was playing for Shanahan and O'Connell. Like, those are two great offensive play callers. Like, I haven't seen Justin Fields with any of this. Like, you got the Rams guys coming over calling plays. You already mentioned the young weapons. They got a top five, top six offensive line. And they're in a dome in a bad division. You're like, And he's going home to Georgia. Like, like all, all this stuff, I think if Justin Fields goes to Atlanta, like we could forget what happened in Chicago, like because of how bad the situation in Chicago was. Like, I just think that we, I don't know what the upside with Fields is, and this will give me a good opportunity to see what that is. But I do think best case scenario, I think Fields has the higher upside. All right. So real quick follow up question unscripted here. And it's just for you, I, I won't answer. Because Fields is your guy, right? You, you, you liked him. You, you liked him coming out of Ohio State with the draft. If you're the Falcons GM, if you're their front office, and you make that decision, we want him to be the guy here. What are you giving up for him? Like, just as of today's date, right? Just as of today's date, obviously this could change as you get closer to the draft. But what would you do? If you could make that move right now today, what would be your price that you give up? I give a second round pick. Okay. I, I so, think that's fair. So you're not touching that first because it's a uh, high it depends, first. It depends. On, it's a high first for Atlanta, right? I mean, that's a. That's what I'm saying. Like, he, he I, I think the potential is there, but he hasn't shown me enough to where I can destroy my draft capital for him. But second round, I think it's very good. Like, okay. it's going to be a top 15 right. pick in the second round. So right. I, I give that up for him. Yeah, I think it might even be a top eight, actually, yeah. or something. All right. All right, so <laughs> let's go to your boys, you know, because the Steelers rule this show. Bigger mistake, the Steelers not upgrading at quarterback or the Panthers not signing Brian Burns to a long-term deal, but instead franchise tagging him. So are you, are you going to give the details on the Brian Burns side of what the Panthers could have done? Well, no, go ahead. So, so basically, I think the Rams offered them like a first round pick, two second round picks, and some other picks. I want to say last offseason or the year before for Brian Burns, and just for the oh, last the last offseason, they offered him all those draft picks just for him to have eight sacks and then be the worst team in the league. And now they're going to franchise tag him for twenty million dollars. So they could have traded him for for King's ransom. And they chose not to. Now they're going to franchise tag them, maybe to trade them for nothing. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty, and that was last year. So I'm focused just on this question in terms of was it a mistake not signing to a long term right now? I'm going to go with the bigger mistake is the Steelers not upgrading at quarterback. And, it, and it's not for the reason that maybe other Steeler fans would say. I would say it was bring in some competition for Kenny Pickett, right? Don't let him get complacent. He's a young guy, but he he had a lot of college success, not so much in the NFL. 
And I'll give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. He had Matt Canada. The offensive line wasn't great two years ago. It really wasn't that much better this year, maybe a little bit better. But plus, even if you don't want to go get a Fields, bring in a veteran for him that he can learn from. He had to learn from Mitch Trubisky. I mean. Who's still learning himself. (laughs) Exactly. Like Patrick Mahomes, he learned from Alex Smith. I would say that's a pretty good veteran quarterback to learn from. He's a winner. And so quarterback's the most important position in all of sports. So I don't think they've helped or put Pickett in a situation or a position to succeed. And by upgrading, I don't, like I said, not necessarily like a Justin Fields, even though to me that would have been a great move for them, especially with Arthur Smith, but at least bring in someone that's going to push them more than just Mason Rudolph would. And that picket can learn from if you say, hey, this guy's going to have the job for the first, first four games. We'll see how it goes. Then maybe we move back to picket. Like, give him some help. Give the guy a chance. And I just don't think the Steelers have done it. Yeah, I, I think you got to go with the Steelers. The fact this gives me the vibe of last offseason when everybody, all those teams that needed a quarterback, that's like, no, nah, we're good. We don't want this guy. And it's like, all right, he goes out and wins an MVP. Like, yeah. like you can't be this nonchalant and picky when it comes to quarterback because, first of all, every team needs one. And the second is, ain't that many great ones available. When they are, and if you don't have one, you need to be in the market of getting one of those guys. I'm sorry, Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson, who I'll ask you about in a minute. Like, these are these are pretty good starting quarterbacks. Like, they're in the top 15, 16 in the league, which Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, and Mitch Trubisky are not. Like, how could you be out on those guys? Like, I know Pickett's got a first-round contract. Ain't like they took him in the top 10. Like, I'm sorry. I think you need to realize that it was a bad investment and get somebody in here at the very least that is competition. I would rather go kick. The, I would rather go kick the tires on Zach Wilson. Bring him in and make uh, him compete. I wouldn't go. No, that no, no. I no, wouldn't. I would say that. But no, bring, bring him in. Like as compi- bring him like in as competition. Him. Like the Jets ain't a great organization. I'm not saying Zach Wilson is better than Pickett, but like Pickett, our our quarterback situation is not solidified to the point where we're like, nah, we're turning our nose down at guys. So I agree. I think them just being out on upgrading their quarterback is the bigger is the bigger mistake. Now, with that being said, one of these guys is a free agent because he just got released, Russell Wilson. Like, should the Steelers go after him? Would you like to see Russ in Pittsburgh? Well, I think based on the price tag. That's enough. At, at, well, no, what I'm saying is based on the price tag at this point, meaning you're going to get a Hall of Fame type quarterback on the cheap. But nothing. Why, why not? Why not? Because he fits that. That mold of what I just said, bring in someone that's going to that's gonna push Kenny Pickett. But two, even if Russell Wilson wins the job, Pickett can learn from it. And you don't need to pick up the fifth-year option after the third year. Just let it play out for four years, and then maybe Pickett plays the following year after learning from Russell. So I would not mind seeing Russell Wilson if the price is right, and I think it can be and will be. He already, he already said he's willing to take a – like right, less deal to play for a contending team or a team. Right, that you feel is so good. I I don't mind. I'd still rather if we're gonna go that far in you terms of big, you want, big, you, you in want. terms of yes, in terms of big names, I would go Fields. But if we don't, if we if if Chicago wants too much for Fields, I think Russell Wilson still can fit pretty nice. And I think the fan base in Pittsburgh would love him because he he plays that Steeler way, right? He plays like Roethlisberger. He he'll run, he'll tuck it. He'll play hard. Like, I, I think the Steelers fan base will like him. Yeah, and I, I look, I think a lot of teams need to look at this pathway when their first-round quarterbacks don't work out. Like, Kenny Pickett could easily be in a situation where you guys bring in a Russell Wilson, compete, he learns. Who's to say he can't take the Baker Mayfield route? Like, that's what Baker needed. He needed to be around other other teams, other organizations, other people, other quarterbacks that have played the game and just kind of see the see the game from the bench. And look at him now. Now, now he's gonna get a, he gonna get another contract. He's a franchise quarterback. Like Kenny Pickett could easily do that, but you got to get somebody in there to teach him. Or even like a Ryan Tannehill, somebody. But yeah, I absolutely think you guys should get Russ because I'm sorry, I'm starting to find out it wasn't all Russ. 
in Denver. Like Sean Payton, his resume looks a little shaky too. So you uh, like, you you love saying that. <laughs> not because I feel like I feel like he's an asshole. I feel like he came in there Whoa, very arrogant. No, he, is. he came the in language. there very arrogant. Like, hey, like all these guys suck on the king, bro. You got one Super Bowl. Chill. All right. Out. All right. Is there another question here or not? Because we this was not a Sean Payton uh segment. You lucky I'm not saying what I really want to say about him. <laughs> um last question for you. Broncos obviously release him. You you're the capologist. I know it's hella dead money that they're taking <laughs> <It's> the cap. <laughs> yeah. What would possess the who would possess the Broncos to cut him to to, to lose that much money? Well, I think it does come down to money though. So you're right. By parting ways with them now, it will result in an $85 million cap hit. That'll be it'll be split. It'll be split across two seasons, depending on how it's designated, whatever that might mean. But the Broncos will owe him 39 million guaranteed this year, no matter what. All right. He can go home and you'll get 40 million. Right. So, but this is the thing of why they cut him. Keeping it would have meant a hit of roughly 90 million over two seasons. So you save five overall. But this was the kicker. Had they kept him past the start of the new league year, which I think is like March 13th or something, by by getting rid of him now and not keeping him into next week, they save $37 million guaranteed for the 2025 season. So not this upcoming year. So, but so the, next season is already off the books by cutting him before the league year. Right. It's still a dead cap hit that they got to split the $85 million, but – they don't have to physically pay him the thirty-seven million like they're paying him this year, thirty-nine. I mean, I didn't go to no fancy school, but all that shit sounds like a lot of money, no matter how you move the pieces. But around. you're saving the actual money. Why would you pay thirty-seven million to someone that you might get rid of next year, but you had to make the decision now but to you know, get rid crazy. of him now? You you getting rid of a guy to save thirty million? Well, you 30, don't even have. A, Anywhere close to, 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 listen, to another listen, plan. You save 37. So this is really the thing, JT. You're either paying them 76 or you're paying them 39. Ooh. What do you want to pay him? Uh, That's straight cash. That's straight I, cash I, out I, of your I, pocket. I want, I, want a, I want a discount, man. Russ got to be sure <laughs> that deal. You want a buyout. Russ said no buyout. The buyout's right. already in the contract. You're like certain NBA rules do not apply. Me, Pay me my 39 and I'll get out of town. We'll see All what right. happens. Steelers 